Hi there. Welcome back to our next session on databases. In this session we will learn about PL SQL stored procedure, functions, cursor, triggers etc. So now let's start with PL SQL stored procedures. The PL SQL stored procedure or simply a procedure is a PL SQL block which performs one or more specific tasks. It is just like procedures in other programming languages. The procedure contains a header and a body. Header, the header contains the name of the procedure and the parameters or variables passed to the procedure. Body, the body contains a declaration section, execution section, and exception section similar to a general PL SQL block. Now let's know how to pass parameters in procedure. When you want to create a procedure or function, you have to define parameters. There is three ways to pass parameters in procedure. In parameters, the in parameter can be referenced by the procedure or function. The value of the parameter cannot be overwritten by the procedure or the function. Out parameters, the out parameter cannot be referenced by the procedure or function, but the value of the parameter can be overwritten by the procedure or function. And in out parameters, the in out parameter can be referenced by the procedure or function and the value of the parameter can be overwritten by the procedure or function. A procedure may or may not return any value. You can see the syntax of creating a procedure on your screen. Now let's understand it with an example. I am creating a simple procedure. You need to follow the steps. It is same as other programming language programs. See the example. Now let's discuss about function in PL SQL. The PL SQL function is very similar to PL SQL procedure. The main difference between procedure and a function is, a function must always return a value, and on the other hand a procedure may or may not return a value. Except this, all the other things of PL SQL procedure are true for PL SQL function too. The function must contain a return statement. Return clause specifies that data type you are going to return from the function. Function body contains the executable part. The as keyword is used instead of the as keyword for creating a standalone function. You can see the syntax on your screen. Let's understand it with an example. You need to follow the example.
Now let's understand PL SQL cursor. When an SQL statement is processed, Oracle creates a memory area known as context area. A cursor is a pointer to this context area. It contains all information needed for processing the statement. In PL SQL, the context area is controlled by cursor. A cursor contains information on a select statement and the rows of data accessed by it. A cursor is used to refer to a program to fetch and process the rows returned by the SQL statement, one at a time. There are two types of cursors. Implicit cursors, and Explicit cursors. Let's understand cursor with an example. Follow the steps. Now let's see PL SQL triggers. Trigger is invoked by Oracle Engine automatically whenever a specified event occurs. Trigger is stored into database and invoked repeatedly, when specific condition match. Triggers are stored programs, which are automatically executed or fired when some event occurs. Triggers are written to be executed in response to any of the following events. A database manipulation, DML, statement, delete, insert, or update. A database definition, DDL, statement, create, alter, or drop. A database operation, server error, log on, log off, start up, or shutdown. Triggers could be defined on the table, view, schema, or database with which the event is associated. Let's see some of the advantages of triggers in PL SQL. Trigger generates some derived column values automatically. Enforces referential integrity. Event logging and storing information on table access. Auditing. Synchronous replication of tables. Imposing security authorizations, and. Preventing invalid transactions. You can see the syntax on your screen. Hope you enjoyed this session. Keep practicing. Happy coding. Thank you.